Welcome to a presentation, NetConf, Why Operators Want a Network Protocol, presented by Principal Solutions Architect, Jan Lien Blod. We often get a lot of questions around why operators want transactions and uh, why people are asking for NetConf. What is that and what's so cool about that? So I, I wanted to answer some of those questions here today. Very often people ask, for example, around NetConf. Okay, we talk a lot about NetConf in uh, both our ConfD products and our NCS product. Everybody that's been in the network industry for the last 20 years has seen every few years there's a new management standard coming out from one of these organizations. It started with CMIP, SNMP, CORBA, SOAP, and now I'm standing here talking about NetConf. So why would, I mean, everybody's saying, every of these generations was saying, oh, this is going to solve all the management problems. And now I'm doing the same with NetConf. So is NetConf just yet another protocol, or what makes it different? And that is also why people want transactions. It's very much related. So if you go back in time a bit, back into 2001 and two, ITF, who once made as an MP protocol, had a big meeting. They have quarterly meetings. One of these big meetings, they discussed one of the topics there was, why has SNMP failed? What do you mean SNMP failed? SNMP is used a lot in the networking industry. Everybody's using SNMP. Yes, people are using SNMP for fault handling and for monitoring the equipment, for retrieving performance data and things like that. But in to very little extent, they are using SNMP for retrieving or for setting configuration on the network for service activation and provisioning and, and configuration, CLI scripting is totally dominating that market. So in that sense, SNMP had failed. So in this big meeting at the ITF, the decision was to start a working group to figure out why are operators not using SNMP for configuration, like it was intended to. And what are people using instead? Is there any other protocol that can fulfill the needs of the operators? After a year of working, the working group wrote an information on RFC, RFC 3535, about their findings. And I'll summarize some of the highlights of that. If you're in, at all interested in this topic, I recommend that you actually go read this paper. It's just like 10 pages long, very, written in a very high level. It's, it's easy reading and very good information in there. But I'll summarize some of the, the main points here. The number one requirement from operators is that it's got to be easy to use the management protocol. Well, we have SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. So how can it get simpler? Well, SNMP is simple to implement, but it's definitely not easy to use, especially not for configuration. So that's why operators are not doing that. And that's something that operators say, you've got to reverse that. We don't care if it's going to be difficult to implement, but it's got to be easy to use. Another thing that they say is, OK, we need to clearly separate configuration from non-configuration items. In SNMP, this is not very clear at all what is configuration and what is not configuration. This makes it hard today with SNMP systems to take it even such a simple thing like a backup of the configuration and restore it later because you don't even know which fields are the configuration that should be restored. And also another problem with SNMP it makes it very difficult to compare the configuration one device with another because of the binary nature and other tool related problems with SNMP. Also operators, they don't want to manage their devices. Operators want to manage their networks and the services that they run on the networks. They don't care about the individual devices. So they want to manage the services in the network on the service level and not in terms of the individual device components. And one of the key aspects of this is network-wide transactions. When they set up a service across the network, maybe across 20 different routers and load balancers and firewalls and all this, they want this service for this particular customer to either be activated or if there's a problem with any of these devices, nothing should happen. You don't want a half configured service. That's when you send in this, the, the very expensive CCNA guys to clean up the mess and undo whatever the scripts did, failing at line 347 uh, on the third device in this activation. So network-wide transactions makes it much easier, much less expensive to write service applications running across the network because they don't have to do all the sort of what if uh, something fails right here, and what if something fails right here, and what if something fails right here, and try to undo whatever they did and do that perfectly so they, did no, they don't leave any garbage in the network. Garbage that will create problems later on. So network-wide transaction is a key point that operators say, we need this. Another aspect of uh, transactions is 
in a transaction. A transaction is a set of configuration changes, not a sequence of configuration changes. One of the things that you have a lot of work with when you are writing SNMP uh, configuration scripts is that you have to figure out the appropriate sequence of configuration changes. First create the interface, then create a route over that interface. In a transaction, that does not matter. You just tell the device, here are all the configuration changes I need you to do. And the device will figure out how to activate it. Obviously, in the code someplace, you'll need to create the interface before you can create a route over that interface. But that's up to the device. It's not the, the manager that needs to figure this out. You should be able to take a backup of the configuration and have it in any order and just put it back again. That's what the transaction gives you. So with transactional interface, you can actually finally get to this backup and restore of a configuration of a network device. But that's actually not the holy grail. That's not what matters really. What matters really is that the operators can write service level applications that activate service level changes. And they don't have to make those applications aware of all the gory details of how to undo something that's half configured or how to deal with the sequence of changes that need to go into that change. They just say, here is the net result I want you to do. Go activate that, please. And that is what a transaction is. Obviously, uh, validation of configuration needs to be tightened up a lot uh, in, in the eyes of an operator. Because what they're dealing with non-transactional devices today, when you're working with a device that's not transactional, you need to make several configuration changes at one go. But since every device uh, that's not transactional will take one command at a time and accept it and run it, and then the next command. But in order to set up a VPN for a particular device, maybe you need 10 commands. But in the process of typing in those 10 commands, if one of these commands is missing, the configuration as a whole will be invalid. But it's a phase that you need to go through until you have typed in all the 10 commands. So devices that are non-transactional will typically accept and not react on configurations that are invalid. They will just say, oh, I'm waiting for that last command. And I'll just not activate this route right now because it's still inconsistent. I can't activate it. So we have a case where devices accept invalid configuration and give you no error code at all. So operators, many of the gray hairs of operators in, through the years has been because the device is not doing what the operator wants them to. And the device is not telling him anything what's wrong or what's missing. So if the devices were transactional and you tell them, this is the whole set of stuff that you, will, that you need to do, it can validate and say, no, you can't do this because this piece is missing. That makes it a lot easier for, for network operators. So basically, if you look at this on a high level, we have the operator economy here. If you look at what, how operators spend their money today, they are spending typically something around three quarters or 80% of their money on operational expense. And that includes all the NMS and EMS development and all that. And something like 20-25% of the money is going to CapEx, buying equipment from, from equipment vendors. The equipment vendors have an information leakage where information about, for example, the, what is config, what is not config, the particular sequencing needs that you have for managing a device. This information, at best, is documented. Usually, it's something that an operator will find out by trial and error in the management software. So this gives a high cost and complexity to the management side, whereas the equipment is relatively inexpensive. What operators want here is that by adding transactions to the devices, well, the devices will be more complex. They will have to deal with transactions, which is, which is a tricky concept to do on a device. But when you do that, you reduce the complexity and, and the cost of writing the operator NMS, EMS software drastically. You're maybe cutting that in half, which is by far outweighing the added cost for the devices. Network wide transactions are very important for the operator economy, and NetConf gives you that. Just by adding NetConf to your devices and NetConf to your NMS software, that gives you network wide transactions and reduces the complexity and cost of these NMS OSS operation systems drastically. Many operators are therefore requiring this from their network equipment providers today. So if you've got this question, this is the background that explains why that is important for them. And it also explains how important it is. It's huge money, much more money that goes into this for an operator than they spend entirely on all the equipment they ever buy. And the ConfD and the NCS products from Taylor Systems, they fully implement NetConf, including all of the optional parts of it. So this is the background for why people ask for NetConf and network-wide transactions. And that's how it works.